Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care AI series. Uh, I rotate through videos that are education related, that are use case related, and that are safety ethics bias related. And today I'm on the use case uh, rotation. And what I wanted to do to today is just do a simple uh, model around patient no-show appointments. So this is a tabular AI uh, use case, and it's pretty popular. I've worked with a number of health systems uh, on uh, this one, and I see it published, uh, published a lot. Um, and uh, so I'll describe the model and some of the workflow changes uh, through a customer um, or a health system project uh, that, uh, that we've been involved uh, in. And I promise next time I'll do a generative AI use case, but I thought I'd do a nice kind of tabular, simple uh, use case uh, for starters. So imagine um, you have a schedule of appointments, and these are the patients that are going to come in today or in the future. Um, so you have the, uh, the name of the patient. You have the date. You have the time. You have the location of the office. You have the doctor. Um, you know, that uh, reason for visits. Reason for visits, something like uh, that. Uh, so you have that, um, you know, appointment system, of course. Now, there are a couple things that are true uh, about that. So um, one is that not everybody will show up, okay? So um, you're going to have no-shows. And the rate that I see quoted most often is that 14% of patients don't show up for uh, their appointments, okay? So that's your no-show uh, rate. Um, and then you do a couple things about that. One is you have FTEs or technology system that call patients. So you try your best to get these patients to come in, as many of these po possible to come in. Uh, so you have you know a number of people that are calling and sending texts and emails and stuff like uh, that to remind them. Uh, and then um, you're still going to have no-shows. So then you do overbooking. And usually it's somewhat random overbooking. So you're over going to overbook the day um, you know, you can take your best guess at what slots might be, uh, might be best to overbook or just, um, take advantage of patient preferences and doctor preferences to try and get as many people into the, uh, building as possible. So this, this costs you money, uh, it's lost revenue, uh, and the overbooking could be a real mess, um, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of kind of waiting time for patients, overflow situations, maybe dull time that kind of thing. So a lot of people have looked at machine learning to get a better sense of when um, patients aren't going to show up and to maybe overbook in those slots or concentrate on those uh, patients from a calling point of view to have them come in and that kind of that kind of thing. So, um, so let me describe uh, a customer um, situation and what they did about it using a model like this. So the um, situation... Let's say the sitch. I don't know how you spell situ sitch, but um, the sitch was the situation was that um, this uh, this is a um, specialty uh, hospital. It was a, it's an eye surgery uh, center. Uh, this is the case that I'll walk you through. They uh, see a thousand patients per week. Uh, they had a no show rate of. Um, the upper teens, depending on the day, so 18% uh, average no-show rate. So it was pretty high, a little higher than uh, average. They had four FTEs uh, calling patients. They called about half their patients to try and get them to come in to re remember their appointment. And they had um, what they described as chaotic overbooking. So they kind of randomly overbook some slots because of this high no-show rate. Uh, and some days all the patients came in and all the overbooked patients came in and they had a real mess and long waiting times. And some days it would work out and sometimes the morning would be, you know, really crowded and the afternoon not so much. So it was just a real chaotic mess from their uh, point of view. And they wanted to see if machine learning could really uh, help them. And it did, just to give you the... Uh, uh, conclusions here. So, um, so let me tell you how they approach the problem. 
So the first is, uh, let me describe the machine learning part of it, because this is kind of interesting to me at least. Okay, so you, instead of your future appointments, you look at your past one year of appointments, and, um, and then you look at whether the patient showed up or not for that appointment. So that last column is your label. So this would kind of be a yes, no on all your past appointments, whether they showed up or not. And then the rest of the columns are what's called your features, so information about that appointment. And machine learning, you want the machine learning algorithm to pattern match to see what kind of patterns it can find. So you need to help it. So um, one of the things that you do is you don't use every field. Usually you don't use uh, identifiers because you don't want it to memorize people's names or uh, that kind of pattern matching. Uh, and then you take some of these fields and you make them more useful. So the date... Uh, the date itself is not useful. The, the fact that the appointment was March 8th of 2023 doesn't matter because that date will never happen again, as an example. But what might be helpful is um, a day of week might be helpful. So whether it's a Monday or Tuesday or that sort of thing, or the month of year. So um might be harder to make appointments in the winter than in the summer. That sort of thing. And time is similar. So instead of the fact that it was 8.31 a.m., uh, it might be morning versus afternoon or the 8 o'clock hour, like the hour of day. So there's that sort of thing. And then you work with your subject matter experts and you say, well, what, what patterns do you see? And they might say, well, if they booked the appointment four months ago, then they're less likely to show up than if they booked it yesterday. So you add a column, uh, you might call it book lag. So how long ago was this appointment booked? Or people that live a long way from the office, that says distance, uh, people that live a long way from the office aren't going to show, um, have more difficulty making their appointments. So, so you kind of work with your subject matter experts to say, what other features of this patient or the appointment might drive no-shows? Um, and the nice thing about machine learning is you can kind of throw everything at a model and it will just weight down the things that don't, uh, don't matter. So it's pretty flexible in that. Uh, in that sense. So that's how the, and then the model is trained and I could describe that in another video, how that whole thing works. And then you have a pattern function that can take features of future appointments like these and generate a probability that the patient is going to show up or not. Okay. Or the probability of the no show um, was the way we did this one. So uh, let me talk about the, um, how it worked and how they put it into workflow. So as an appointment was scheduled, a probability of no-show was determined, um, and if it was 70% or above, an icon was placed on the scheduling display. So 70 to 90% probability got one icon, and then 90% or above got a different icon, so kind of a, a yellow-red uh, concept. And these icons were visible to everybody that used the scheduling system. So as patients called in to try and squeeze themselves in for appointments or as they were overbooking, they could see these icons, they could see a, a group of icons, and they would overbook into those slots. So that, that was a good uh, visual management uh, aid. Uh, the second thing is anybody over 70 plus, um, they would call three times to try and get them to confirm the appointment. And if they didn't confirm the appointment, they gave up that slot and opened it up for somebody else. Okay? So, um, so they basically asked for patients to confirm their appointments. And the ones that didn't confirm and had a high pr probability of no-show, they gave the slot to somebody, uh, somebody else. Sounds a little mean, but they made this clear to patients that they needed to confirm uh, in advance. Um, over 90, they had supervisors call the patients and maybe help them out with uh, transportation or uh, other challenges they may have making the appointment. So they made extra effort on the over 90 uh, probability uh, people. Um, they went from four people to one person calling patients. So they saved money from an FTE point of view. They did this because they focused on the patients they called. So they called uh, only 150 of these 1,000 per week. And it used to be 500 of the 1,000. So they saved uh, time and money uh, in terms of focusing on the patients that were more likely to um, uh, to not show up. Um, and and then they had a three-month waiting list at this um, at this place. So um, 
uh, what they were able to do is when slots got freed up uh, or they wanted to overbook at a certain rate, they would work through the waiting list one week in advance and call patients and say, hey, we have an opening or hey, we have a slot and try and fit those extra patients into it. So it a- ended up being added revenue for this uh, for this customer. Um, and uh, so it's, it worked out great and that's how they integrated into the workflow. And there's various ways to do it, but it was smart overbooking. Uh, it was reduced FTEs, calling patients. It was visual management showing what areas of the day are likely to have um, no-shows and allowing kind of the staff to be empowered to overbook and the right uh, the right places and deal uh, deal with that. Um, so it's been a great success there. Um, overall, no-show rate has moved from the 18% down to 10% now. Um, and uh, they're looking at further workflow changes on those sorts of things to try and drive that down to 5%. Um, and that's great because it's going to really help with waiting time, added revenue, Patients that need access to their services have a better chance of getting access, which is great. Uh, the one other thing that I thought was interesting is the features that ended up being most important for the model. Um, the number one feature was this book lag. So the number of days prior um, that the appointment was actually booked. Um, the second uh, uh, top feature was the uh, telephone number of the patient, meaning if they didn't have a telephone number, then um, that was a factor in their no-show rate um, and probably because they couldn't remind them of the appointment or might have also been social you know, social factors associated with people that own phones and people that don't, that kind of thing. Uh, appointment type, location, uh, distance uh, was the next uh, one. And then, interestingly enough, um, a bunch of social determinants factors. They also had a questionnaire that they use with patients that asks uh, social determinants type uh, questions. And some of the higher ones were, do you have access to transportation? That's kind of intuitive. Threat of being hurt, stress level, and number of people in household. Uh, So I thought that was really interesting. We've all learned uh, that social uh, determinants are um, a larger determinant of your health and your own biology. Um, And uh, it turns out it's also quite a determinant of your administrative behavior, uh, so to speak. So I thought that was interesting. So that's it. So kind of a simple model, tabular AI, um, but it's not too hard to put together. Fits into a workflow pretty, uh, pretty nicely. These models can be quite accurate, and it easily replaces a kind of chaotic and somewhat cost, uh, costly workflow that most uh, health systems have, uh, have today. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or thoughts or you've done it yourself and want to share your story. I'd really appreciate hearing from you in the uh, comments. Thanks. Bye.